Okay, so uh, we've looked at this quantity called the sample mean xn bar and which has the expected value expected value of xn bar is going to be the mean of the IID distribution and we've also shown that the variance of xn bar is going to be given by sigma square by n where sigma where where the individual xi's are drawn from the distribution with mean and variance sigma square so so far so good i'm now going to introduce a different quantity and this quantity is called the sample variance so the sample variance is uh, denoted by the term Sn and you have to remember that the sample variance is not the variance of the sample mean. These two are not the same. These are different things. This is the variance of the sample mean. This quantity Sn which I haven't yet defined is defined as Sn square which is supposed to look like sigma square is defined to be sigma xi minus xn bar square over n minus 1. So there's a reason why it's n minus 1, but I won't go into it here. But uh, it sort of looks like the uh, variance uh, that you'd see in a, in, a, in a distribution, and that's why s stands for sigma. But what you're saying, but we're just defining it. We're defining it as uh, something we can always compute from a set of n samples. We compute the value xn bar, which we defined, which we uh, as we did earlier, and then we subtract xi minus xn bar, which tells us how far away is the individual value from the mean. We square it. So when we square it, what happens is that it doesn't matter whether we are below or above the mean. So that's what the squaring does. And then we divide the whole thing by n minus one, and we call this value Sn square. And it can be shown, but I'm going to show it, that the expected value of Sn square is going to be sigma square. Where remember sigma square is this value over here. That is the uh, variance of the individual samples. Of course, we don't know what sigma square is, but the expected value of Sn square is going to be this. So we can think of Sn square as being an estimate. It's an estimate of sigma square of sigma square and we want this because remember that what we really care about is how far away is xn bar from the true mean and we know that it depends on two values it depends on sigma square and depends on n well we know n that's okay that's just simple that's just the number of simulations we run but sigma square we don't know and so what we'd like to do is estimate it and you can estimate it using this estimate over here uh, from sn square and so if this value of sigma square is large, then that means that the variance of, S, uh, of xn is large. And so we need larger number of simulations n in order to have a value of the xn bar close to mu. So uh, knowing what sigma square is is important. And so what we want to do is answer the following question. Can we use this information over here to estimate n properly. To estimate n, that means the estimate n such that the estimate xn bar is good. Where good, I don't know, uh, is good enough, perhaps is a better way to say it. And to do this, we will have to use something called the central limit theorem, and I'll explain what that is in the next module.